video contains four solved examples of frequency modulation and phase modulation. First few examples are taken from our textbook. So in the first example, we are asked to sketch a frequency modulated signal and a phase modulated signal uh, for the modulated signal M of T. The constants, the sensitivity constants that are given to us are Kf and Kp. Kf is 2 pi 10 to the power 5, whereas Kp is 10 pi, respectively. Whereas the carrier frequency that we are given with is 100 megahertz. So this is basically the first waveform of the modulating signal M of T, and based on this and on these parameters plus the carrier frequency fc we need to uh, determine what would be the modulated waveform so the instantaneous frequency fi this is equal to uh, the carrier frequency fc plus sensitivity constant kf over 2 pi divided by 2 pi because now we are talking about uh, frequency rather than uh, radians per second omega so kf over 2 pi times m of t when so this k of f is given to us which is over here and this is the value for that 2 into 10 to the power 5 right and then we divide by 2 pi and then we see the message signal where it lies uh, just to simplify so we have 1 to 10 to the power 8 plus 1 into 10 raised to the power 5 times the message signal so we can see that the maximum value and the minimum value of m of t is plus 1 and minus 1. So the instantaneous frequency similarly would have a minimum value and a maximum value. The minimum value will correspond to the minimum value of the message signal. So what I'm trying to say is that over here the frequency of the modulated signal would be minimum and over here the frequency of the modulated signal would be maximum by that we can just simply plug in the values of m of t initially for minimum we will plug in the value of minus 1 so once we plug in the value of minus 1 so we would eventually have 10 power 8 plus 10 power 5 into minus 1 so we would have around 99.99 megahertz remember this is 100 megahertz so we are removing 0.1 megahertz from 100 megahertz so we get 99.9 megahertz now for the maximum value fi max we will be looking into the peak value which is over here for that in 100 megahertz we will add 10 power 5 and we get 100.1 megahertz now remember this is a range of value not some crisp value so what i'm trying to say is that over here when we uh, get a modulated signal that would have a frequency of 99.9 megahertz at this point it would be exactly 100 megahertz because at this point the m of t would become 0 and hence you would simply have 100 megahertz and eventually you would have over here uh, 100.1 megahertz and then it will uh, fall back to again 100 megahertz 99 megahertz and upwards right so this plot is basically over here so initially we have a low frequency and if you see here the frequency gets uh, quite the oscillations quite increase until we reach m of t with the mp of t with the peak value and then it starts to fall down over here you have minimum value which corresponds to this value and then again it would increase and then it would decrease so this is basically the plot from here which is a quite simple straightforward plot of frequency modulation so just you have to look into the message signal and from the message signal uh, you can simply plot the frequency modulated waveform but when we need to find the modulated waveform for a phase modulated signal 
So the first thing is that we need to find the derivative of the Messi signal. How do we find the derivative of it? The easy way is to just find the slope and the slope is going to determine the values of the peak values of the derivative of this message signal M of T. Considering now that uh, this is Y2, this is Y1 over here. Similarly, over here we can say this is X2, this is X1. So if you need to find the slope S, right so this would be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so this is simply 1 minus minus 1 divided by so for the whole period that means from from this point until this point it is 2 into 10 raised to the power minus 4 so that's a time period but we need half of that so that means x2 minus x1 is half of the overall time period this is until here we just need half of it which lies on this plane in this range so this would be simply 2 into 10 raised to the power minus 4 divided by 2 so if we solve this we would simply have plus 20,000 for the positive slope and Similarly, for the negative slope, we would have minus 20,000. So we'll get the values of plus 20,000 and minus 20,000. So that is our m dot of t. So once we got m dot of t, so the instantaneous frequency, then it is straightforward. Uh, the instantaneous frequency is equal to the carrier frequency plus kp, the sensitivity, divided by 2 pi m dot of t, which is over here. The maximum value, as you can see, is 20,000. The minimum value is minus 20,000. So it's quite easy now to plot uh, the phase modulated signal. You would just plug in the negative value, so you get the minimum frequency, which is 99.9 .9 megahertz, and then you can plug in the positive 20,000. So it is going to give you 100.1 megahertz. So an important point over here is that for this signal, you simply have a consistent frequency. Over here you would have a low frequency, over here you have a high frequency and a low frequency. Whereas for frequency modulated signal, it was basically increasing linearly and then decreasing and so on and so forth. Now this brings us to another very very fundamental aspect of communication. But this time it is more related towards digital communication. Where we use the word shift keying. So in analog, we often use modulation, whereas in digital communication, we are we are specifically concerned about shift key. So presently, what we have is uh, this is example 5.2 in our textbook. So it says that we need to sketch FM frequency modulated waveform for the modulating signal M of T, and then it is giving us a constant KF, which is 2 uh, 2 pi to 10 power 5 and then again the carrier frequency is 100 megahertz so it's quite obvious that you now the method signal whenever it is plus one you would have m value m peak value of plus one or m max value of plus one and then you could have m min value of minus one so whenever it's plus one this 100 would be added with kf times plus one so you would simply have this uh, this expression so if you put plus one here you would have a hundred point one megahertz over here and then you if you put uh, m of t equal to minus one you would have 99.9 .9 megahertz so depending on the input signal you uh, you're going to shift key it into a specific frequency now when we are specifically mentioning digital communication the format for our signal might be in terms of ones and zeros so we may have something like a 1 here, a 0 here, which is represented by a minus 1 volt or again a 1 and a 1. So plus 1 volt is represented by 100.1 megahertz and then a 0 is represented by 99.9 .9 megahertz and again plus 1 is represented by 100.1 uh, megahertz. So this type of shift keying or modulation is something that we call as FSK, which is frequency shift keying in digital communication systems.
Now next it says that we need to sketch a PM. Now this really gets very very interesting. So it says that we need to sketch PM phase modulation waveform for modulating signal M of T. It, it again gives us uh, some constant value of the sensitivity Kp which is equal to pi by 2 and the carrier frequency remains the same which is 100 megahertz. Now for the given message signal if this is the M of T uh, the first thing is of course for PM we need to take the derivative of this one. So if you take the derivative of this one you can see that there is an increase from minus 1 to 1 so you would have an impulse here which would have a strength of 2 right plus 2 but over here the slope remains 0 so there is no, uh, no change so over here the value would be 0 and then there is the negative slope of strength minus 2 so in a way when you take the derivative of this message signal so what you would have is you would have a plus 2 a minus 2 here again a plus 2 here and a minus 2 so this is basically plotted over here so m dot of t is a delta function of having strength plus 2 and then a delta function of having having a strength of minus 2 and so on and so forth so once we get m dot of t now we can uh, calculate the instantaneous frequency f i of t which is f c plus k p the constant divided by 2 pi into m dot of t which is again this is 100 megahertz and this is simply 1 by 4 m dot of t it's basically the frequency is not changing right now it's simply 100 megahertz where we differ is that wherever we get a spike or a delta function we would have a phase change and presently that phase change is of 180 degree i will elaborate further initially when we're sending a signal uh, we have something like pm is amplitude of the carrier cos times omega ct cos with argument omega ct plus kp m of t right so this kp well that is a sensitivity constant so now this is given which is pi by 2 and then we have a message signal m of t remember originally that the message signal was either plus 1 or it was simply minus 1 so it was plus 1 or minus 1 so the message signal would be either over here i have mentioned minus 1 or plus 1 so if we want to plot this cos function so it is it is something like so if there is m of t which is minus 1 so that means omega ct minus pi by 2 so by minus uh, by sh a phase shift of minus pi by 2 what we mean is we mean that we are going to shift this signal towards right, right? so minus pi by 2 would mean that we are having something like this so this would convert to ac sin omega ct but when we are having m of t equal to plus 1 so if you plug in the value of m of t equal to plus 1 so this would become omega ct plus pi by 2 so if you have plus pi by 2 then the waveform would be shifting towards left and hence you would have So this is simply minus AC sine omega CT. So there is a phase shift of pi which is plus AC minus AC sine omega CT which is basically observed over here as well. So this is phase shift key. So there is a phase shift of pi uh, whenever there is an impulse. Now the next example is actually even more interesting. So uh, there are two more examples that we'll uh, do next. So in the first example, uh, we are given this signal. Uh, this is our M of T. And it is uh, rather involved. We can observe that the message signal M of T, it starts at time minus 10. And then it continues on until 7. 
where it remains the same and then there is a dis uh, jump discontinuity uh, at minus 4 and then there is a uh, gradual decrease and so on and importantly we have a delta function so whenever there is a delta function things get really interesting uh, remember that we are asked to sketch an FM signal and for that we are given uh, angular uh, frequency omega c uh, carry frequency and sensitivity constant kf from this point at this point the oscillating frequency would be exactly equal to omega c but as the value of message signal increase so would the instantaneous frequency so overall the oscillation would decrease until this point so once we reach here from this point to this point the instantaneous frequency would remain the same then there is a discontinuity over here and then from here suddenly the frequency would increase at this point over here but then it would gradually drop the instantaneous frequency would become low over here it would increase and then it would suddenly jump up and increase further then it would drop down over here this would on this range you would have simply omega c and over here we have a direct delta function direct delta function so let's interpret it further further so some of the things are quite obvious whenever the magnitude of the message signal is high the frequency would be higher and uh, when whenever it is low it could be lower but the interesting things are when we have when we are faced with uh, a delta function so we have a, uh, a delta function here which is having the strength of 0.3 so remember a delta function has approaching zero width and in infinite height so by 0 point, 0 0.3 we mean that its area is equal to 0 0.3 right so over here when we have discontinuity we would have a phase shift right and it's called phase discontinuity so this phase discontinuity is nothing but the strength of this direct delta function which is 0 0.3 times kf so this is equal to 1.2 pi radius so as discussed before the amount of shift that you would get so this is what we would have this is the amount of shift that we will get which is 1.2 uh, pi and this is observed over here by means of dotted lines another important consideration is when we are here or more importantly when we are here you can observe that this blue a blue signal and the green signal they are combining at this point so let me zoom it further so if you see there is no discontinuity over here so this is something that we usually term in communication as continuous phase modulation CPM continuous phase modulation and it plays a very very significant role because if you have discontinuities in a signal so what it would do is it would create a big number of harmonics and you would have quite high frequency and we need to avoid it so we need to avoid this kind of scenario but anyways if we are faced with a signal in which we cannot avoid it so we can't help it next there is desire to sketch a pm signal and then we are given a new message signal m of t and we are also given uh, the constant kp as well as angular frequency omega c so we are asked to plot the uh, the phase modulated signal so again we have the message signal the first thing that we would do is take the derivative of the message signal so whenever there is an increase in the magnitude we would have a value of slope which is represented here so similarly uh, over here the slope would be zero so our value would be over here zero 
and then it is decreasing so our value will be decreasing but then there is a discontinuity here so once we are taking a derivative so this would be basically showing a direct delta function of strength 1.5 similarly we are also having some discontinuity over here and here and and so on so next when we are going to modulate it as per the prior discussion so over here the 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 pattern before this one you would simply have omega c over here you would have omega c plus kp by 2 pi into 4 that is m dot of t again over here you would have omega c here you would have omega c plus kp into minus 8 and so on but over here we would have a discontinuity so this is simply 1.5 which is coming from the strength of it 1.5 times the sensitivity constant which is kp this is 3 pi radians so the phase shift would be of 3 pi and similarly three uh, whenever we have uh, a direct delta function we would have a phase shift and this is represented in all the blocks right so eventually we would have this signal which is phase modulated signal in time domain 